Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. Many of us in this community are very well aware of the versatility of silver and its uses in almost every aspect of our lives. With technology evolving so quickly and rapidly, we can see these more and more apparent as time moves on. We also understand the historical role that silver has played as money for thousands of years. And it's because of that versatility of silver and its use as money for thousands of years, we see silver as the duality metal. And I like to refer to it. Silver as a commodity and silver as money. We're going to explore that as we look into these factors, the four factors that drive silver demand. Let's explore. This comes to us from Investing News, and there's four factors that drive silver demand, and we're going to see how they have kind of evolved and shape-shifted, and how they could possibly do so even more in the future. Known as the world's most versatile metal for its unique properties, silver is used in many applications from everyday silverware to medicine. Industrial and technological uses of silver account for well over half of annual demand, spurred by the metal's strength, malleability, and ductility. In 2017, global demand for physical silver is estimated to have decreased 5% year-on-year, in part due to a large drop of bar and coin consumption. This is partially offset by greater consumption from the silverware, jewelry, and industrial sectors from the U.S. Geological Survey. I think that's going to give us probably the most unbiased um, outlook of silver, uh, you know, that we can probably find here from this report from the U.S. Geological Survey. In 2017, U.S. mines produced approximately 1,020 tons of silver with an estimated value of $564 million. Silver was produced at four silver mines and as a byproduct or co-product from 36 domestic base and precious metal mines. Alaska continued as the country's leading silver producing state. Interesting. Followed by Nevada. There were 24 U.S. refiners and reported production of commercial grade silver uh, with an estimated total output of 1,950 tons from domestic and foreign ores and concentrates and from new and old scrap. The physical properties of silver include high ductility, electrical conductivity, malleability, and reflectivity. That's important. It's the most reflective metal out there. In 2017, the estimated domestic uses of silver were electrical and electronics, 36%. Coins and metals were 22%. Jewelry and silverware were 7%. Photography, 5%. And other, 30%, which is uh, the second largest category. And that is where we're seeing a lot of the major breakthroughs with a medical and uh, science and technology. Everything from antimicrobial bandages, clothing, pharmaceuticals, plastics, batteries, bearings, brazing and soldering, catalytic converters and automobiles, electroplating, inks, mirrors, PV, solar cells, water pur purification, and wood treatment. Mercury and silver, the main components of dental analgram are biocides and their use in anal analgam in inhibits recurrent decay. And so here we see uh, further statistics of, with production and the like. But very interesting indeed. Um, so going back, that's kind of, you can see how that's changing um, and how in, in many cases, especially when the price goes down, you may see less demand for uh, things like uh, jewelry and bar and coins. But looking, moving forward, increased silver demand is expected to come from the solar industry since the precious metal is a great conductor of both heat and electricity, making it perfect for use in solar panels. So here's a look at four factors deriving, driving silver demand from investors should keep an eye on according to the most recent data from the Silver Institute. Industrial applications. Silver is the best electrical and thermal conductor of all metals 
and so it's used in many electrical applications, particularly in conductors, switchers, contacts, and fuses. And electronic silver is used mainly in the preparation of thick film place paste, multi-layer ceramic capacitors, and in manufacturing of membrane switches and silver film and electrically heated automobile windshields and conductive adhesives. In 2017, demand from industrial applications increased 4% from previous year, reaching 599 million ounces. And this was first real increase um, since 2013. Aside from electronics, silver has many other industrial applications, photovoltaic or solar panels. The automotive industry and brazing and soldering are the main industries where demand for silver is currently increasing. Here's a brief rundown of these three categories. The solar panels, we all know, are really taking off. Uh, the cost of production really has gone down over uh, the course of uh, several years here. The use of silver in fabrication of PV cells, most commonly known as solar panels, is seen in the area of rapid growth in the short to medium term. The solar industry, energy industries association expects there will be over 100 gigawatts of solar installed in the U.S. by 2021. Using silver as a conductive ink, photovoltaic cells transform sunlight into electricity. In 2017, photovoltaic demand for silver rose 19% compared to the previous year. It reached 94.1 million ounces, up from 76.6 .6 million ounces in 2016, according to the Silver Institute. The growth was driven by an increase in solar panel installations in China. The growth in China was mainly due to increase in household installation of solar panels, up by 370% year-on-year. It hit 19.44 gigawatts in 2017, it says. Also, certain mandates in states like California by 2020 will uh, report that any a certain new home construction above a certain square footage percentage, and I don't know if it's by number of levels, that will be required to use solar panels. In the automotive industry, last year about 550 million ounces of silver were used in automobiles. Every electrical action in a modern car is activated with silver-coated contacts. Basic functions such as starting the engine, opening power windows, adjusting power seats, Closing a power truck are all activated using silver membrane switch. Brazing and soldering. Adding silver to the process of solder, soldering and brazing helps produce smooth, uh, leak-tight and corrosion-resistant joints and combining metal parts. In addition, silver brazing alloys are used widely in everything from air conditioning and refrigeration to electrical power distribution. Make no mistake that... We're on a juggernaut with electrical um, uses of silver, and it's going to only grow from here on out, especially in population growth areas such as India and China. And as they become, as, as capitalism uh, takes root and in those areas, furthermore, in the free markets, you're going to see more automobile use and more use and demand for electronics. That's why it's the largest category. Number two, jewelry. And demand in 2017 was 209.1 million ounces for jewelry. And for uh, industrial applications, it was 599 million ounces in 2017. I'll be very interested to see what, the, what these data look like for 2018. Jewelry is often what most people think about when they consider silver demand, and for good reason. When it comes to jewelry, few materials are better suited for it than silver. Lustrous but resilient, the metal responds well to sculpting, requiring minimal care and lasts for a lifetime. Silver possesses working qualities similar to gold, enjoys greater reflectivity, and can achieve the most brilliant polish of any metal. In 2017, silver jewelry fabricated increased 2% from the previous year, rising up 209.1 million ounces, and that's pretty amazing. I think that goes to show you it's, um, you know, it's still a very strong area, even though silver does tarnish, and it does need to be polished to maintain that shine. And number three, with 151.1 million ounces uh, 
demand in 2017 are coins and bars. Minted silver coins were first used in the eastern Mediterranean region in 550 BC, and by 269 BC, the Roman Empire had adopted silver as part of its standard coinage. Silver was a main circulating currency until the 19th century and was graded phased out of regular coinage. Even so, silver is still used in some circulated coins, especially in American, Australian, Canadian, Mexican, and Australian bullion coins from investors. Silver, silver demand in terms of coin fabrication took a dive in 2017, dropping 27%. To put this in perspective, that represents a 48% fall from its record high level in 2015. Silver has lost its luster for those who are accumulating it as, quote, a hedge, or some people refer to it as an investment. But not for us. We're holding strong. Many of us in this community, we're continuing to stack on. Yes, we are. And the fourth area is silverware. Coming in at 58.4 million ounces for demand in 2017, sterling silver has been the standard for silver hollowware and silver flatware since the 14th century. Silver cutlery and other decor last for generations as it resists tarnish. Uh, and as a traditional decoration in homes around the world. Copper is mixed with silver to strengthen it for use in cutlery, bowls, and decorative items. In 2017, demand from silverware industry jumped up 12% from 52.1 million ounces in 2016 to 58.4 million ounces. So that is fascinating. Where do you think silver demand is going in the future? And I think it is interesting um, in this article from Amanda K, to see some uh, how things are changing in areas where you, re where you really wouldn't expect it. You know, silverware, especially when you think about how do you define silverware. Um, in my view, especially for its medicinal properties, silver plated um, uh, uh, tableware is probably just as medicinally beneficial and really as practical as as 925 silver sterling but I do think it's fascinating I think it would be fine to have a a set of sterling silver and I don't know it'd be interesting to find out if you can order some modern um, um, sterling ware as a store of wealth but also as as a good um, you know a clean and antimicrobial way to consume uh, beverages and you know, to eat with as utensils. So very interesting indeed, these four different areas, silverware, coins and bars, jewelry, and um, industrial applications. I think those are the four major factors that will drive silver demand. But as we've noted, we've seen some changes and evolution of those factors. But I think those are, will be the more of the four main factors that will, will, will drive for years to come in some form or another. Some of these categories may change. You know, you know, 50 years ago, photography may have been one of those factors um, and, and where, or that could have been a fifth, that could have been a large enough that could have created a fifth factor. But that's obviously declined. But I think from here on out, it's going to remain probably those factors. Post your thoughts below. Am I missing something? Is there something else that should be included in here? Or do you think this is off base with these different four? Do you think we should we could categorize uh, any of these? Do you think jewelry um, will go away? Or do you think the silverware will go away? Should they be combined? That's all interesting. It's all kind of up in the air as to what, what you think. But I think this is a kind of a good way to categorize these, uh, these this different demand for silver. Nonetheless, silver is here to stay and we will continue to accumulate it and most in this community accumulate it for coins and bars and we'll continue to do so even though that's the the, the category that's dropping the, the most. But again, it would be interesting to see what it would look like for 2018 if those numbers have been compiled yet. Post your thoughts below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate comment, and subscribe.